is Tori and today I'm going to be drawing the psychedelic orange luck frog of Evernow and I have a little bit of a story to go along with this drawing. Um, it's been raining almost constantly this week. Every morning when I wake up there's been frost on my car and I've been fighting off a cold uh, but in my mind I can do exactly what I want to do and these are the perfect types of days for diving inwards. So I took a hike along a muddy trail of Evernow. I live in the Pacific Northwest in my real life, so a lot of the inner world looks like the types of landscapes that you see around here. The trees are really old and covered by moss, and most of the leaves have fallen off the trees at this time of year. I was having the best time soaking up the sun rays from the inner light, that inner sunlight, and there's a unique kind of warmth that fills me up even on the gloomiest days. I was watching my mind at play, scouring the details of an imaginary mountainside of fantasy, and there on a boulder dripping with moss and rainwater, I saw the orange luck frog of Evernow. I see this particular frog hopping around my mind every so often, and every time I see him, interesting turns seem to happen in my life. I know that he can talk because I've spoken to him before, so when I saw him in the distance I began to ran toward him to try and get close enough to talk to him. I called out as I approached the orange frog. I came close enough to see him smirk at me, but he didn't respond. Instead, he turned on his tiny webbed feet and hopped away from the trail and into the forest. Without a second thought, I began chasing after him. My shoes were soon caked in mud, but my attention was fixed on the hopping orange creature in front of me. His color stood out from the greens, browns, and yellows of the forest around him, but I was still worried I would lose him to some distraction, the way that dreams can sometimes wander uncontrollably. I heard him laughing as he picked up speed and led me farther and farther away from the trail and into the deepest realms of the mossy forest. The colors of consciousness were bleeding and swirling, but I remained transfixed by the orange frog until he stopped, perched in the long, hanging branches of a giant willow tree. He began to sing a song, and as far as I could tell, the words were nothing but nonsense. But before I could try to puzzle out their meaning, my foot caught on a gnarled tree root and I went flying forward into a puddle of rainwater that I hadn't noticed before. The frog's smile broadened and it was the last thing that I saw before the water gulped me up. The puddle hadn't seemed like much at first, but this kind of thing happens often in the imagination. Things are rarely how they seem and are prone to waver in their solidity. I was in a pool of water as deep as an ocean. I can't explain it, but I felt pulled downward by an irresistible force. Somehow I knew the orange frog had led me to this space for a reason. I found that I could breathe perfectly, a benefit of imaginary water, and below me I could see a light, so I began to swim towards it. I passed schools of brightly colored fish as I descended. Many of them seemed to wear the same grin as the orange frog, and finally I came to the source of light, a type of underwater plant that was waving peacefully back and forth with the current. It held a cone shape at first. The light was vibrant and golden. When I reached out my hand to touch it, the petals splayed out into a blossom as wide as I am tall, spilling out fibers of light and wonderful feelings that seeped into my skin and filled me with intoxicating joy. There at the eye of the blossom was a sealed glass jar, and the moment I saw it, I knew it was the reason that I was there. So I plucked it from the blossom, and the moment it was removed, the light went out, and I was plunged into a terrifying darkness. Every good feeling was gone, and in that dark emptiness, I began to frantically swim back to the surface with the glass jar in one arm. I found a space under the willow tree, and the orange frog was still there. He hopped his way down to crouch on my shoulder and looked down at the jar with me. What is it? I asked him, as I picked off bits of dead leaves and wiped away the mud. A gift, said the orange luck frog, a bit of self. I'd never seen anything like it. The tiniest creature, something between a human and a plant, with a colorful cap-like covering on his head. He was asleep and curled up inside the jar, surrounded by flowers and soft cotton fibers. 
I opened the lid and gently lifted him from inside. He fit easily in the palm of my hand, oblivious to the world around him as he yawned and rolled over. He was wearing tiny orange overalls. What is he? I asked the frog again. The orange luck frog hopped off my shoulder and smiled back at me. His name is Pete. Take him back to headquarters before he wakes up. He doesn't eat food. He survives on water and laughter only. So make sure he gets his daily dose. Without another word, the orange frog was gone. I put the sleeping Pete back in the jar and started back towards headquarters. Okay, so that was the orange luck frog. I'm excited to do some more drawings of Pete, this little creature. Um, I've done a few sketches, but nothing final. And I'm also excited to go back to Evernow headquarters, and I haven't talked about that at all yet on this channel. So um, I'm really looking forward to that, and also to introducing you to some of the other characters. Um, so like this video and subscribe if you want to. Um, and I guess I'll just talk a little, I have a little more time, so I'll just talk about this process um, that I'm developing for this channel. It seems to be happening pretty naturally and I don't want to try to over control it, you know? So what I'm doing is I'll just turn on music and for about an hour or so I'll just go inward and I let the imagination play and do what it wants and I just stay in that space of the observer and I just kind of follow the imagination wherever it wants to go, um, whatever feels bright. And then after uh, about an hour or so, I, I come back to a normal state of awareness and I bring back um, stories and images and uh, everything that I experienced and I write it down and I form it into a story and use that as the inspiration for the artwork that I'm going to make in the video. All right, well, take care and thanks for watching. I hope you're well. Goodbye.